Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video I will attempt to predict the price of Apple stock using a machine learning algorithm called random forest regression. Now I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So if you're going to code along with me go ahead and click on file then click on new notebook and then a new tab open up for you and eventually a new cell open up for you. Now before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos on this channel, hit that bell notification. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do is put in some comments. So I'm going to put in a description about the program. So here I'm just going to put this program attempts to predict the future price of a stock. Specifically, we're going to try to predict the future price of Apple. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button here in the top left and that will create a new cell for me. Also, you can get the code or the data set or just support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science and I will leave a link for that in the description below. Also, I'm not a financial advisor so this is not financial advice and be sure to do your own research before making any sort of investment. Okay, so with all that being said, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. I'm going to make that a capital I and I'm going to import pandas as PD. I'm going to import numpy as MP even though I might not use numpy. Also from sklearn.ensemble I'm going to import random forest regressor and last but not least I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as blt and I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and this will let me know if I made any mistakes alright so it's currently running okay and it's almost done and it's done now so next thing I'm going to do is come to this folder here I'm going to click on this upload button to upload the data set so reminder upload files will get deleted when the runtime is recycled and that is okay so now I have this data set called stockdata.csv I'm going to go ahead and exit out of there. Let's go ahead and create a new cell now that I have that data. And in this cell, I want to collect and clean the data. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read in the stock data. So I'm just going to just type DF for data frame. It's short for data frame. I'm going to set this equal to pd.read underscore CSV. And it's going to take in the name of that CSV, which is stock underscore data dot CSV. And then to clean it, I'm going to try to remove any NA values. So I'm going to set df equal to df dot drop NA, and that should do it. So then let's take a look at the data. So look at the data. So I'm just going to type df here. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now we can see the data set. It contains 252 rows of data and seven columns. Okay, and those seven columns are up here, date, open, high, low, close, adjusted, close, and volume. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. All right, so now in this cell, I'm going to, I'm going to show the data visually. All right, so to do that, I can just simply type df.plot. And then I'm going to set my x-axis to be the date and then the y-axis will be the close price. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this to plot the data. There we go. So here's our data for Apple stock. And we can see the dates down below. That doesn't really look that good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type plt dot, dot x ticks. And I'm going to set their rotation to be equal to 45 degrees. So let's go ahead and run this now to make it look a little bit better. And now we can see the dates a little bit better here. Okay. All right. So now we see that. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the model. So I'm going to create a variable called model and set it equal to, again, this will be the random forest re regression model in this case the random forest regressor all right and then left parentheses and right parentheses and then I'm going to run this cell all right so that's good let's create a new cell now the next thing to do or the next thing that we need to do 
is we need to train the model. Okay, so here I'm going to create a feature data set that I'm going to call X. I'm going to set X equal to our data frame and we're going to get the open column. We're going to get the high column, the low column, and the volume. And this will be our feature data set. All right. Also, I want all of the rows except for the last row so that I can kind of test my model. So I'm going to set x equal to x. Okay. And I want all of those columns, but the last row. So I don't want the last row, right? So I don't want the length of our data frame minus one. I don't want that last row. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast this as an integer just in case, you know, why not? So now we have the feature data set. Next, I'm going to create the target data set. So I'm going to call it Y and let's set Y equal to DF close. Okay. And then I want all of the close prices except for that last close price in the last row. All right, so that's easy enough. I'm just going to basically do the same thing I did here. So I'm just going to highlight this, copy using control C, come down here and paste it using control V. And I'm going to change that X to be a lowercase Y. Okay. And then last but not least, we need to actually train the model. So I'm going to type model dot fit. Fit is a, another term for train. I'm going to put in the X data set and the Y data set. And again, this is just training the model. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, let's create a new cell now that the model has been trained. So now in this cell, I want to test the model a little bit. So I'm going to get the model's predictions. So I'm gonna create a variable called predictions and I'm gonna set it equal to model.predict. And I'm gonna input that, that feature data set called X to get the model's predictions. And then I'm going to print the model score to see how well the model did when it came to the training. All right, so the model score is model.score. We're going to input the X and the Y training sets, right, to get the model score. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and we see the model score is 0.9975981, you can see all the rest of the numbers. The best score is one. So this model is, or this model did very good on the training data set, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a good model. All right, but for now, we're just going to accept it how it is. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. All right, now in this cell, we're going to make the predictions. So we're gonna see if the model can predict the price of that last row that we didn't train it on. All right, so I'm gonna create a variable called new data. I'm gonna set it equal to DF and I want all of those same rows that we, I'm sorry, all those same columns that we got last time. So I'm just gonna come up here. I'm just gonna highlight all of this. I'm gonna copy using control C. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna paste it using control V, okay? except for this time I only want the last row of data. So I'm gonna put dot tail and then one for that last row. Then I'm gonna create a variable called prediction again, or this will just be prediction because it's only gonna be one. So the other one was predictions with an S. So this will just be prediction. And I'm gonna set prediction equal to model dot predict. And it's gonna input that new data. All right, now let's create a print statement. I'm going to print the model predicts the last row or day in this case, right? To be, and I'm gonna put a colon there and then prediction. Okay, and then I want to print the actual value. So I'm gonna print actual value is and then colon. And then let's print the actual value, which will be the last row. And it will be in the close price column. So I'm gonna put close here and then dot tail 
and then one to get that last row dot values at position zero zero all right so let's go ahead and run this and see how well the model did with predicting that last row of data's price which if we go up here can we see it and the answer is yes so under the closed price i'm sorry under the closed column here if we go all the way down to this last row we can see that the price is 129 us dollars and 61 cents and this is approximately right so i'm not adding that last one here at the end so let's see if the model predicted that value let's run this cell and we can see the actual value here which is what we saw up top uh, with it being rounded and we can see that the model predicted the price to be about $128 and I'm just going to round this up to 22 cents okay so the model isn't far off the actual value and of course that is a good thing but that doesn't necessarily mean that our model is good a lot more testing needs to be done we need to uh, test it with more data and anyways uh, please take the program with a grain of salt and remember to do your own research before making any sort of investment thanks for watching the video and a special thanks to the patreon supporters on patreon.com again if you would like to become a supporter of this channel or just get the code or the data set then I will leave a link to the Patreon page. It is patreon.com slash computer science in the description below. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great day and a happy new year. See you in the next video.